afternoon. Uh, thanks for joining us for your Saturday. All right, good afternoon. Yeah, Welcome good afternoon. to what I now know is you refer to as the lakes, right? Yep. All right. Now, it took me a little while to get the right name, but uh, thanks for coming out and spending your Sunday afternoon with us. Uh, inaugurating ourselves in the space. So you are our very first audience in our new home. Uh, so thank you for coming. Uh, I'm Mr. Calabaugh. I'm the, the new theater director over at Broad Run. Uh, if I haven't met you, hello. <laughs> Nice to meet you. Uh, many of you already know our theater has been under construction and has just recently been released to us. Uh, but it caused us to kind of get a little creative. So that's what we tried to do here. We are performing our last two shows outside uh, at Ashburn Village tomorrow in the afternoon and then next Saturday at One Loud and at the bar. So, uh, each space offered different challenges or uh, different adjustments we made to our set. So uh, we, we've this is our third performance space out of four. Our show is about 90 minutes with no intermission. Uh, we have understudies. So our, our year of interesting circumstances continues, but that's the magic of theater, right? All right, so uh, please enjoy the show. Ignore the birds. And without further ado, this is a Midsummer Night's dystopian dream. Theater. Long before there were buildings, this is where theater was performed. This was where theater was performed. Nature provided the backdrop and the sun provided light. Now, who knows anything about Shakespeare? He was old. Not true. He actually died at what we would consider a young age. He is old. Um, okay. I guess I'll have to call on people individually. Um. You! What do you know about Shakespeare? Uh, okay. Shakespeare's life already. There's a Globe Theater, his wife in Hathaway, and his son Hamnet. Plus, we also learn he lived during the reign of Queen Elizabeth, or the Elizabethan times. Great! At least somebody's paying attention. Today, we'll be delving into one of his most celebrated works, A Midsummer Night's Dream. Is that the one where everyone dies? No, that's Romeo and Juliet. Um, no, Julius Caesar. I, I thought it was Macbeth. <gasps> Don't. Don't say that title. It's referred to as the Scottish play. What does that have to do with clear tape? No, not Scottish. Uh, not Scotch. Scottish. Like the country. And Shakespeare had a lot of plays where people die. This is true. That's cool. Can you just watch the movie? I mean, yeah, we don't understand it until we watch a movie anyway. Isn't there one with, like, Christopher Walken or something? No, this is English class. We have to read. Why can't we just read a dystopian novel or something? Care to join us? Uh, sorry, I was just watching the new Kanye West video. That won't get you an A. Uh, sometimes I wish California and all those Hollywood types would just drift off into the ocean. Perhaps if I wrapped the whole thing for you, you'd pay attention. Hm. Yeah, actually, can you? Uh, no. Everyone, please be quiet. Today I prepared for you a special treat. It is one of the most famous monologues from A Midsummer Night's Dream. If we shadows have offended, think but this, and all is mended, that you have but slumber, that you have but slumber here, here, while Our nuptial hour draws on a pace. 
four happy days bring in another moon, but oh, methinks how slow this old moon wanes. She lingers my desires, like to a stepdame or a dowager, long withering out a young man's revenue. Four days will quickly steep themselves into night. Four nights will quickly dream away the time, and then moon, like silver bow, new bent to heaven, shall like totally behold the night of our solemnities. Go, Philly straight. Stir up the Athenian youth to merriment. Awake the pert and nimble spirits of mirth. Turn melancholy forth to funerals. The pale companion is not for our pomp. I bet, big Theezy. Hippolyta, I wooed thee with my sword, and won thy love by doing these injuries. But I will marry thee in another key, with pomp, with triumph, and with reveling. Did the peeps you asked for. Happy be Theezy, our renowned duke. And hip hop icon. Thanks, Aegeus. What's the news with thee? Uh, full of vexation come I with complaints against my daughter Hermia. Uh, stand forth, Demetrius. Uh, my Duke of Rhyme, this man hath my consent to marry my child. Uh, stand forth, Lysander. And uh, my spiky Duke, this man hath bewitched the bosom of my child. Thou, uh, thou Lysander, thou hast given her rhymes and interchanged love tokens. Uh, thou hast beneath her window sung with feigning voices verses, feigning love. With cunning hast thou filched her heart and turned her obedience, which is due to me, to stubborn harshness. My Duke of Rhyme, I beg this sage's law of Athens, as she is mine, I may dispose of her, which shall be either to this man or to her death, according to the law immediately provided in that case. What say you, Hermia? Be advised, woman, to you your father should be as a god, one that composed your beauties, yea and one to whom you are but as a form in wax, by him imprinted, and within his power to leave the figure or disfigure it. Demetrius is a cool dude. Uh, so is Lysander. Okay, but in this kind, wanting your father's voice, the other must be held the worthier. I would my father look but with my eyes. Nah, you gotta peep it like pops, baby girl. Uh, I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I know not by what power I am made Bold, nor how does it concern my modesty in such a presence here to plead my thoughts. But I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Check it, check it. Give me a beat to kick this wisdom. Either to die the death or to abjure forever the society of men. Therefore, fair Hermia, put your desires to question. Examine well your blood, know of your youth. Like it or not, pop pops with the truth. Huh? Whether, if you yield not to your father's voice, you can endure the livery of a nun. For I to live in shady cloister mewed, to be a barren sister all your life. But earthly or happy is the rose distilled. True. And that which withering on the virgin thorn grows, lives and dies in single blessedness. So. I will grow, so live, so die, my lord, ere I will my virgin patten up unto his lordship, whose unwished yoke my soul contends not to give sovereignty. Oh, snap! Demetrius got roasted! Take time and pause, for by the next new moon, the ceiling day betwixt my love and me for everlasting bond and fellowship, either prepare to die in disobedience to your father's will, or else to wed Demetrius as he would. Relent, sweet Hermia, and Lysander, yield thy praise title to my certain right. You have a father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia, do you marry him? Scornful Lysander, of course he hath my love, and what I have, my love shall render him. As she is mine, I do estate all of her unto Demetrius. My lord, I am as well through by this It's well possessed. My fortune's a heavy weight, barely weight. And Demetrius, which is more than those folks can say, I am beloved of Demetrius Hermia. Why should I not prosecute my right? Demetrius, I'll about to his head. May love to know his daughter help, and she sweetly dotes, roundly dotes, ideology dotes upon the spotted and inconsistent man. Oh, you running game on Helena too? I must confess that I have heard so much, and with Demetrius thought to have spoke thereof. But Demetrius, come, and come, Aggie. You shall go with me. I've got some private schooling for you both. For you, fair Hermia, Look to arm yourself to fit your fancies to your father's will, to death or to a vow of single life. Come, my Hippolyta, what cheer, my love? Demetrius, Aegeus, you shall go with me. I've got some pr uh, mm. With us, 
I've got some business against our nuptial and must confer with you of something that deeply concerns yourselves. Billy, bring the squad to the pool. We'll give it to you in a hot minute. How now, my love? Why is your cheek so pale? How chance the roses there do fade so fast? Be like for want of rain, which I could not petite them from the tempest of my eye. I me. For I could ever read, could ever hear, by tale or history, the course of true love never did run smooth. But it was either different in blood. Oh, cross, too high to be enthralled to low. Or else it stood upon the choice of friends. Oh, hell, to choose love by another's eyes? Or, if there were sympathy in choice, war, death, or sickness did lay siege to it, making it momentary as a sound, swift as a shadow, short as any dream, brief, that, brief as the lightning in the collie night, the jaws of darkness do devour it up. So quick, dark thing, dark, dark, bright things come to confusion. If then true lovers ever cross stands as an edict in destiny. A good persuasion, therefore. Hear me, Hermia. I have a widow aunt, a dowager of great revenue, and she hath no child. From her Athens, her house is remote seven leagues, and she respects me as her only son. There, gentle Hermia, I may marry thee. Thou knowest me still for thy father's house, and meet me in the hood, we'll leave about the grounds. We did break until the morning day. Yeah, we wait. Oh, my lies, Hanger. I swear to thee, thou Cupid's strongest foe, thy his best arrow with the golden head, and vows more than men ever spoke, and number more than women ever broke. In the same place that thou wast coming to me, tomorrow, truly, I He comes low. Look, it was held. Say, Demetrius loves your fair. Oh, happy fair! You're so pretty. Sickness is catching all her favors, so yours, but I catch for Hermia. Ere I go, my ear should catch your voice, my eye, your eye, my tongue should catch your tongue's sweet melody. Were the world's mind, Demetrius being faded, the rest I'd give to be to you translated. Oh, teach me how you look and with what art you sway the motion of Demetrius' heart. I even dyed my hair, he still doesn't care. I frown upon him, yet he gives me love still. Oh, that my frowns could teach your smiles or skills. I give him curses, yet he gives me love. Oh, that my prayer could such affection move. The more I hate, the more he follows me. The more I love, the more he hateth me. Oh, his folly, Helena, is no fault of mine. None but your beauty would that fault were mine. Take comfort, he no more shall see my face. Lysander and myself will fly this place. I do seem Daphne's as a paradise to me. Oh, then what graces in my love to dwell that he hath turned a heaven unto a hell. Helena, to you our minds we will unfold. Tomorrow night, when Phoebe doth behold her silver visage in the watery glass, decking with liquid pearl in the bladed grass, a time that lover's flights doth still conceal, through Athens' gates we have devised to steal. Oh, and in the hood where you and I often snuck out and party till dawn, there myself and Lysander shall meet. And fence away from Athens, turn away our eyes to seek new friends and stranger companies. Farewell, sweet playfellow. Pray thou for us, and good luck grant thee thy Demetrius. And keep word, Lysander and myself must starve our sight. As you unto him, Demetrius, dote on you. How happy some or other some can be through Athens. I am fought as fair as she, but what of that? Demetrius thinks not so. He will not know what all, but he do know it. As he errs, Jodan and Hermia's eyes, so high admiring of his quality, things base and vile, boding no quantity. Love can transpose to form and dignity. Love looks not with the eyes, but with the mind, and therefore is winged Cupid painted blind. For ere Demetrius looked on Hermia's eyes, he hailed down oaths that he were only mine. And this hail of heat from Hermia felt, so he dissolved and showers of oaths did melt. I will tell him a fair Hermia's flight. Then to the wood will he tomorrow night pursue her. If I have thanks, it is a dear expense, but here in mean eye to enrich my pain to have his sight tither and back again. Company here? Yeah. Do our best to call them generally, man by man. 
here is the scroll of everyone's name, which is thought fit to rule Athens, the play, and I write the loop before the Duke and Duchess on their wedding day at night. Uh, first, good Piper Prince, say what the play treats on, and then read the names of the actors, and so grow to a point. Marry our play is the most lamentable comedy and most cruel death of Pyramus and Thisbe. Ah, a very good piece of work, I assure you, and a uh, merry. Now, good Peter Quince, call forth your actors by the scroll. Oh, players, spread yourselves, spread yourselves. <clears throat> Answer as I call you. Nick Baum, the weaver? Freddy, may what part I am for and proceed. You, Nick Baum, are sit down for the role of Pyramus. What is Pyramus? A lover or a tyrant? A lover that kills himself most gallant for love. It will ask some tears in the true performance. If I do it, let the audience look to their eyes. I will move storms! I will condole in some measure. Oh, to the rest, to the rest. Yet, my chief humor is for a tyrant. I could play Heracles rarely, or a part to tear a cat in to make all split. <coughs> Watch. The raging rocks and shivering shocks shall break the locks of prison gates, and Phyllis car shall shine from far and make and mar the foolish thing. This was lofty. How lofty this was. Uh, now call forth your other actors. Oh, this was Ericles' vein, a tyrant's vein. A lover is more condoling, of course. <laughs> Francis Fluke, the bells mender. Here, Piper Quince. Fluke, you must take Thisbe on you. Oh, what is Thisbe? A wandering knight? It is the lady that Pyramus must love. Nay, Faith, let me not play a woman. I have a beard coming. That's all one. You shall play it in a mass, and you shall speak as small as you will. And I may hide my face. Let me play Disney, too. I will speak in monstrous little voice. <coughs> Disney, Disney. Ah, Pyramus, lover dear, thy Disney dear, and lady dear. <laughs> no, no! You must play Pyramus. And flute, you Disney. Well, proceed. Robin Snarveling, the tailor. Here, Piper Quince. Robin Starveling, you must play Thisbe's mother. Tom Snout, the tinker. Here, Piper Quince. Here, Piper Quince. You, Pyramus's father, myself, Thisbe's father, snug the join of the lion's part, and I hope here is a play fitting. Have you the lion's part in frame? If it be, give it me. Round. Slow, steady. You may do it extempore, for it is nothing but roaring. Uh, then let me play the lion, too. I will roar that I will do any man's heart good to hear me. I will roar, 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 that I will make the Duke say, let him roar again, let him roar again, yo. <laughs> <laughs> and you should do it too terribly, that you would fright the Duchess and the ladies, that they would shriek, and that were enough to blast us all. They would they waste really all us fools. fools. I grant you, friends, if that you should fright the ladies out of their wits, they would have no more discretion but to waste us. But I will aggravate my own dear voice. So that I will roar you as gently as any suckling dove. I will roar you into her, any nightingale. Pyramus! Pyramus! You can play no part but Pyramus. For Pyramus is a sweet-faced man, a proper man, as one shall see in a summer's day, a most lovely gentleman-like man. Therefore, you need to play Pyramus. But masters, here are your parts. And I, and I entreat you, request you, and desire you to come them by tomorrow night and meet me in the palace hood a mile without town. For there we will rehearse. For if we meet in the city, we shall be dogged with company and our devices known. In the meantime, I will draw a bill of properties such as our play wants. I pray you all, fail me not. We will meet, and there we may rehearse most obscenely and courageously. Take pains, be perfect. Adieu. Yeah, okay, Nick. Adieu. Through bush, through briar, over park, over pale, through flood, through fire, we, we do wander, wander everywhere, switching in a moon sphere. Wow, that's an answer. <laughs> and we serve the fairy queen, distribute orbs and get some green. The club kids all her pensioners be in their gold coat spots. You see, in their gold coat spots. You see, see, just. The
three rubies. Just three rubies. More party favors. Fools and freckle fun they savor. They savor. We must go score some dewdrops here. And hang a pearl on every fool kid's ear. Farewell, well, that love of spirits. We be outie. Our queen and all our elves come, come here, here and on. As the king doth keep his revels here tonight, take heed the queen come not within his sight, for Oberon is passing fell in wrath, cause she was kicking it with that Indian boy and Bucci's crew. Either we mistake your shape. And making quiet. Or else you are the shrewd and knavish fright called Robin, Robin Goodfellow. Goodfellow. Are not you she that frights the maidens of the villagery? Misleading night wanderers. Laughing at their harm. Those that have goblin call you in sweet puck. You do their work and they shall have good luck. That's you, right? You got it! I am that merry wanderer of the night. I jest to Oberon and make him smile when I have fat and bean-fed horse beguile, nay in likeness to that of a filly foal. And Sometime lurk I in a gossip's bowl in very likeness of a roasted crab, and when she sips against her lips, I bob and on her withered dewlap pour the ale. The wisest aunt telling the saddest tale, sometime for a three foot stool mistaketh me, then slips I from her bomb down topple she, and Taylor cries and falls into a cough, and then the whole choir hold their hips and laugh and wax it in their mirth and sneeze and swear. Uh, a merrier hour was never wasted there. But room fairies, here comes Oberon. And here, my mistress. Would that you were gone? We have a quota to reach. Peace out, Puck. We have a quota to reach. Peace out, Puck. Met by you, my proud Titania. <laughs> Ill met by moonlight, proud Titania. What? Jealous Oberon. Very skip hence. I have forsworn his bed and company. Company. Terry, rash wanton, am I not thy lord? Then I must be thy lady. But I know when thou hast stolen away from fairyland. Hanging out downtown all day, playing on pipes of corn, and versing love to amorous Philida? Why art thou here, come from the farthest beach of Venice, but to forsooth your bouncing Amazon, your buskin mistress, and your warrior love? To Theseus must be wedded, and you come to give his bed joy and prosperity. How canst thou thus for shame, Titania, glance at my credit with Apollos, knowing I know thy love for Theseus? <laughs> Didst thou not? Lead him through the glimmering wood of Paragenia, whom he ravished, and make him with fair Ariana break his faith with Ariana and Antiopa. These are forgeries of jealousy, and never since the middle summer spring met we in Dale, forest, or mead, by pave fountain, or by rushy brook, or by beach margin of the sea, to dance our ringlets in the whistling wind. But with thy brawls thou hast disturbed our sport. You have yet to learn your lesson of last when your rage ruptured the fault and created a new continent of California and a new Duke of Athens in Big Theasy. Now your rage plays another song, beating distemper into that atmosphere. Therefore the winds, as in revenge, piping to us in vain, have sucked up from the sea contagious fogs, which falling in the land have every pelting river so proud that they overborne their continents. And the moon, the governess of the floods, pale in her anger, wash away all the air which rheumatic diseases do abound. And through this distemperature we see the seasons alter, is as in mockery set, the spring, the summer, the chilling autumn, the angry winter. They change their wanted liveries and the amazed world by their increase, so we not know which is which. This progeny of evil comes from our debate, uh, from our dissension. We are their parents and their original. Do you amend it then? It lies with you. Why should Titania cross her Oberon? Were you creeping round with that Indian boy from Bucci's crew? Set your heart at rest. The fairy land buys not the child of me. I used to hang out with his mother back in the day. I have to look out for her little man. More like full grown man that you can't stop looking at. How long within this hood intend you stay? Perchance till after Thesis' wedding day. If you will patiently dance on our round and see our moonlight revels, then stay with us. If not, shun me, and I'll spare your haunt. Admit it, and I'll go with thee. I won't admit to an imaginary crime. I'm out of here. Well, go thy way. Thou shalt not from this grove till I torment thee for this injury. My gentle puck, come hither. Thou rememberest once I sat upon a promontory and heard a mermaid on a dolphin's back, 
uttering such dulcet and harmonious breath that the rude she grew civil at her song, and certain stars shot madly from their spears. Did you hear the sea maid's music? Good times, good times, yeah, I remember. That very time I saw, but those could not, riding between the fair moon and the earth, Cupid, all on, a certain Amy took at a fair vessel thrown by the west, and loosed his love shaft smartly, as it should pierce a hundred thousand hearts. But it misfired and landed down on Sunset Boulevard. I think it's in the dumpster behind the old Chinese food place I like, stuck in an egg roll. Get me that moldy egg roll. <laughs> the juice of it up upon sleeping eyelids lane will make man or woman madly dote upon the next live creature that it sees. Fetch me this herb and be thou ear in the Leviathan can swim a league. I'll put a girdle round the earth in 40 minutes. I don't care what you wear, just get it quickly. <laughs> Having once this herb, out to watch Titania when she is, and drop liquor of it in her eyes. The next thing waking she espies, be it lion or bear or meddling monkey or unbusy ape, she shall pursue it with the soul of love. But who comes here? I am invisible, and I will overhear their cause. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is Lysander and fair Hermia? The one I'll slay, the other slayeth me. Thou toldest me they were stolen unto this hood, and here am I, and woed within this hood, because I cannot meet my fair Hermia. Not to mention it's kind of sketchy. <laughs> Hence get thee gone, and follow me no more. You hard hearted adamant, but yet you draw not iron, for my heart is true as steel. Leave your power to draw, and I shall have no power to follow. Do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? Or rather, do I not, in, in plainest truth, tell you, I do not, nor I cannot, love you? And even for that, I do love you the more. I am your spaniel, and Demetrius, the more you beat me, I will fawn you. Use me as your spaniel. Spurn me, strike me, neglect me, lose me. Only give me leave, unworthy as I am of your love. And what worser place can I beg in your love, and yet a place of high respect for me, than to be used as you use your dog? Tempt not too much the hatred of my spirit, for I am sick when I look on thee. And I am sick when I look not on you. You do impeach your modesty too much to leave the city and commit yourself into the hands of one that, that loves you not, uh, to trust the opportunity of night and the ill counsel of a desperate place with the, the rich worth of your virginity. Your virtue is my privilege, for that it is not night when I look at you. Therefore, I think I am not in the night nor doth this wood like any worlds of company, but you and my respect are all the world. Then how can it be said I am alone when all the world is here to look on me? I'll run from thee and hide me in the brakes and leave thee to the mercy of, of wild beasts. The wild is half not such a heart as you. Run as you will, the story shall be changed. Apollo flies and Daphne holds the chase. The dove pursues the griffin. The mild hind makes speed to catch the tiger. Bootless speed when cowardice pursues and valor flies. I, I will not stay thy questions. Let me go. Or if thou do follow me, do not believe, but I will do thee mischief in this hood. Aye, in the temple, in the town, the field, you do me mischief. Find Demetrius your wrongs to set a scandal on women. Why cannot we fight for love as men do? We should be wooed, yet I am made to woo. Oh, I'll follow thee and make a heaven of hell to die upon the hand I love so well. Fare thee will, nymph. Ere he do leave this grove, thou shalt fly him, and he shall seek thy love. Welcome, wanderer. Hast thou Cupid's egg roll? Aye, there it is. I pray thee, give it to me. I know this quiet alley where mortals don't go, where op oxlips and nodding violet grows. There sleeps Titania sometime of the night, lulled with dances and delight. And with this juice I'll anoint her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. I mean, it may need some good karma. Take thou some of it. And seek through this uh, grove for a sweet Athenian lady who is in love with a disdainful youth. Anoint his eyes, but do it when the next thing he espies may be the lady. Affect it with some care that he may prove more fond of her than she upon her love. You do that, O love. You do that, and meet me eager in the first pop crook. Spotted things with double tongue. Don't worry, you can't trust me, Nancy. Nudes and flowers, you know wrong. Come to me on a very quick, fill a melody. Sing me a mercy. 
Reality is when thou dost with him. Do it for thy true love, take him. Love and language for it, say, be it bear or war. Tiger or cat or boar with bristled hair. When thou wakest, it is thy dear. Wait when some vile thing is me. My love, you faint with wandering in this hood, and to speak true, I am forgot our way. Who else is here for me, and if you think it good, and dare you for the comfort of the day? Be it so, please, Sandra, find you out of bed, for I am on the stitch. The rest of my head. One turf shall serve as a pillow for us both. One heart, one bed. Two bosoms, and a single chalk. Plus, it's kind of sketchy. Very good life, Sandra. For my sake, better life. I'm just not that kind of a girl. Oh, take the sense, sweet of my innocence. Love takes the meaning in love's conference. I mean, your heart unto mine is knit such that one heart we can make of it. So then, two bosoms and a chain with the no. And then, two bosoms and a single trough. By lying your side, for me, I do not love you. My sinner feels very quickly. You must be sure my man and my pride, and her meant to say lies to hinder it lies. But you gotta get that ring right here first. So first, you need a nice sweet friend. I love never all through my sweet life then. Amen, amen to that fair prayer, I say. And then end to life when I am loyalty. Here is my bed. Sleep give me all these rest. I have to wish the wishers I have you.
shall be our stage, this is our tiring house, and we shall do it in action as we do before the truth. Uh, a pedigree. Oh, what say is that, Mr. There are uh, things in this comedy of pyramids that have another things. First, pyramids of science, which the ladies can not be bought. Oh, and that. Fire like in a parlous beer. I leash and kill an house with all this stuff. Uh, not a witch. I am advised to say, all well. Write me a prologue, and let the prologue seem to say, we will do no harm with our swords, and that pyramids is not killed indeed. And for the more better assurance, tell them that I, pyramids, am not pyramids, but a bottom reader. This will put them out of fear, of course. Well, we will have such a prologue, and it shall be written in eight and six. Uh, no. Maybe two more. Let it be written in eight and eight. Will not the ladies be in fear of the last? I hear they promise you! Masters, you ought to consider with yourselves to bring in God shield us. The line among ladies is the most dreadful thing. For there is not a more fearful wild fowl than your dying living. And we ought to look to it. Therefore, another prologue must tell that he is not a lion. Nay, you must name his name, and how his face must be seen through the lion's neck. And he himself must be crusading thus, or the same fashion. Ladies, or fair ladies, I am a wish. Or fair ladies, I am an entreat. Not to fear, not to tremble, my life for yours. For if you think I can hinder as a lion, it were pity of my life. I am no such thing. I am man as other men are. And there indeed you must name his name and tell them plainly he is Snug the Joiner. Well then tell me so.
black orange tawny bill, the throstle with his nose so true, the red with a little grill. What angel wakes me from my flowery bed? that more honest neighbors will not make them friends. Nay, I can plead upon occasion. Thou art as wise as thou art beautiful. Not so neat. But if I had wit enough to get out of this hood, if I had wit enough to serve my own. Out of this hood do not desire to go. Thou shalt remain here whether thou wilt or no. I am a spirit of no common rate. The summer is held off depend upon my estate, and I do love thee. Therefore stay with me. I'll get thee a fairy to attend to thee, and fetch thee jewels and sing to thee while I press flowers to sleep. And I will purge thy mortal grossness, so that like an airy spirit shall go. Peace, blossom, call what I'm off, let's be ready. And I, and I. Sworn to you, bearing the badge of faith to prove them true. Keep to it, and more and more. But drift till the truth comes to trouble is all astray. Your vows are to her, me a lady sacred or My oath with oath, and you will nothing more wed. Your vows to hurt me, wouldn't you skill, will even weigh and poke this lady's tail. I had no judgment when I swore to her. Nor none in my mind would you give her or. Demetrius loves her, and loves not you. Oh, Helena, goddess nymph, perfect divine, to what my love shall I compare thine eye? The crystal is muddy. Oh, how ripe and so thy lips, those kissing cherries tempting grow. It is pure congealed white. High Taurus snow, fanned by the eastern wind, turns to a crow when thou holdest up thy hand. Oh, let me kiss this princess of pure white, this seal of a bliss. Oh, oh, spite, oh, hell! I feel honored men to sit against me for your merriment. If you were civil, they knew courtesy. You would not do me thus much injury. Can you not hate me as I know you do? But you must join in souls to mock me too. If you were men, then you are in show. You would not use a gentle lady so to bow and swear and swear praise my parts when I am sure that you hate me with all of your heart. You are both men and both rivals that love Hermia and now both rivals to mock Helena, a trim exploit, a manly enterprise to, to conjure up tears in a poor maid's eyes of your derision. None of noble sort would so offend a court a virgin and extort a poor soul's patience all to make you sport. You are unkind, Demetrius. For you love Hermia, this you know I know, and here with all good will, with all my heart, in Hermia's love I yield to you upon my part, and yours of Helena to me bequeath, whom I whom I do love and will do till my death. Never to mockers waste more idle breath. Lysander, keep thy Hermia. I will none. If e'er I loved her, all that love is gone. My heart to Hermia, but as guestwise sojourned, and now to Helena is at home returned. There to remain. Helena, it is not so. This marriage, not the faith, thou dost not know. Left to thy peril, thou will buy it dear. Look, yonder where thy love comes, yonder is thy dear. Oh, dark night, that from which the eye its function takes, the ear more quick of apprehension makes, wherein it doth impair the seeing sense it pays with double recompense. Thou art not by mine eye, Lysander, found. Mine ear, I think, it blown to thy sound. But why unkindly didst thou leave me so? Why should he stay? Whom love doth press to go? What love can press lies hinder from my side? You're like so yesterday. I'm all aboard the Helena train. The hate I bear thee may me leave thee so. You speak not as you think it. It cannot be. No, oh, she is one of the Confederacy. Now I perceive they've conjoined all three to fashion this false sport in spite of me. Injurious Hermia, 
most ungrateful men. Have you inspired with these? Have you contrived to bait me on with foul provision? It's all the counsel we have shared. The, the sister's vows, the hours we have spent with kids that hate people at a time. No, oh, it's all forgotten. Of the cold age friendship, child faces. But yet, in union and partition, two lovely berries molten on one stem, so two sweet bodies of one heart. Do what to one and crown at one's breast. And will you rest our ancient love asunder to join in men in scorning your poor friends? It is not true. She's not maiden. Not think you were that kind of girl. Oh, I am amazed at your passionate words. I scorn you not. It seems that you scorn me. Have you not set Lysander as in scorn to follow me and praise my eyes and face and make your other love Demetrius even but now to spurn me with his foot to call me proud as nymph? Divine and rare, precious, celestial. As much as I kind of like it, wherefore he speaks the stern case, and wherefore doth Lysander deny his love so rich for your soul and tender me, forsooth affection, but by your steady arm, by your consent? But thought I be not so embraced as you, so hung upon love, so fortunate, but miserable both to love and love. This you should pity rather than despise. It. I do come to persevere per counterfeit sad looks, make mouths upon me when I turn my back, wink at each other, hold a sweet jest up. The sport well carries shall be chronicled. If you had any pity, praise our manners, you would not make me such an argument. But bear ye well, tis partly my own fault, which absence or death soon shall remedy. Stay, gentle Helena. Hear my excuse. My love, my life, my soul, fair Helena. Oh, that's awesome! Sweet, do not scorn her so. If she cannot entreat, I can compel. Thou canst compel no more than she entreat. Thy threats have no more strength than her weak prayers. Helena, I love thee. By my life I do. I swear by that which I lose for thee. To prove him false that says I love thee not. Not funny anymore. I, I say I, I love thee more than he can do. If thou say so, withdraw and prove it too. Quick, come! I stand here. Away, you harpy! Beat it! Ye, you are a tame man! Go! Hang off, thou cat, thou burr! Vile thing, let loose, or I will shake thy eye like thee from a serpent! <laughs> Why have you grown so rude? What change is this? Sweet love! Thy love! Out, tiny tartar, out! Loathe medicine, hated potion, hence! <laughs> You're not kidding. Yes, forsooth, and so do you. Demetrius, I will keep my word with thee. I would I had your bond, but I perceive a weak bond holds you. I'll not trust your word. What, should I hurt her? Strike her? Kill her dead? Although I hate her, I'll not harm her so. <gasps> what, can you do me no greater harm than hate? Hate me? Wherefore? Oh me, what news, my love? Am I not Hermia? Are you not Lysander? I must fear now as I was erewhile. <laughs> Since night you left me, but since night you left me. Why, when you left me, oh, but God's forbid in earnest, shall I say? Ay, by my life, and I never did desire to see thee more. Therefore, be out of hope, of question, of doubt. Be certain nothing truer, that I do hate thee and love Helena. <gasps> oh, me. Oh, you juggler, you canker blossom, you thief of love. What, have you come by night and stolen my love's heart from me? Kind I faith, and you no modesty, no maiden shame, no touch to bashfulness. What, will you tear impatient answers from my gentle tongue? Bye bye, you counterfeit, you puppet, you. Puppet? Oh, why so? I <laughs> that way goes the game. <laughs> now I perceive that she hath made comparison between our statures. She hath urged her height, and with her personage, her tall personage she her height forsooth she had prevailed with him and have you grown so high in his esteem because i am so dwarfish and so low how low am i thou painted maypole speak how low am i i am not yet so low but that my nails can reach unto thine eyes oh i pray you will you mock me gentlemen let her not hurt me I cannot fight. I have no gift at all shrewdness. I am a right maid for my cowardice. Let her not strike me. 
You may perhaps think because she is somewhat lower than myself that I can match her. Lower? Aha! Oh. Oh, Hermia, do not be bitter with me. I have her lords of love you did spare Hermia to never come and take your counsel, <laughs> never wronged you, except earlier with Demetrius, I told you yourself, I so good. He followed you for love, I followed him. But he have chid to threaten me, to spurn me, strike me, nay, to kill me too. And now, so you let me quiet go to Athens while I pair my folly back and follow you no further. Let me go. I get you gone. Who is it that hinders you? The Polish heart that I leave here behind. What Lysander? But Demetrius. Be not afraid. She shall not harm thee, Helena. No, sir, she shall not, though you take her part. Oh, when she is angry, she is keen and shrewd. She was a fixed when she went to school, and though she be but little, she is fierce. Oh. Little again! Nothing but low and little! Why will you suffer her to play out me thus? Let me come to her! Oh, oh. Oh. Get you gone, you dwarf! You mimin us of hindering not grass made! You reed, you acorn! <laughs> you are too officious in her behalf that scorns your services! Let her alone! Speak not of Helena! For if thou dost intend never so little show of love to her, thou shalt abide it! She holds me not! Now follow, if thou darest, to try whose right of thine or mine is most in Helena. Follow? Nay, I'll go with thee, cheek by jowl. This is thy negligence. Still thou mistakest, wilt commit thy neighboring's willfully. Believe me, king of shadows, I mistook. Did not you tell me that I should know the man by the Athenian garment he had on? And so far blameless proves my enterprise that I have anointed. Athenian's eyes, and so far am I glad it did so sort as this their jangling I esteem a sport. See these lovers over seek a place to fight, therefore Robin overcast them. <laughs> with starry welkin cover thou anon, with fog as black as Acheron, and lead these testy rivals so astray they come not within another open way. Like Lysander sometimes frame thy tongue, and then stir up Demetrius with bitter wrong. And from each other wilt thou lead them thus. So death counterfeiting sleep take them with leaden legs and batty wings doth creep, and then crush this earth into Lysander's eye, whose liquor has this virtuous property to take all air from his blood, and make his eyeballs roll with wanted sight, and see the lovers back to Athens when. You do that, and I'll see how Detang is getting along. Uh, my very lord, this must be done with haste, for night's swift shadows cut the clouds full fast in yonder sign to Laura's harbinger. And with the coach, ghosts wandering here and there, troop home to churchyards already to their wormy beds are gone. For fear lest they should look their shames upon, they willfully <laughs> exile themselves from light, and must for I consort with black brown night. We are spirits of another spirit. And I, with morning's light, have oft made sport. Notwithstanding, haste, make no delay. We may affect business yet ere day. Up and down, up and down, I will lead them up and down. I am bearded field and town. Pop will lead them up and down. Oh, here comes one. Demetrius, <laughs> speak thou now. Here, villain, drawn and ready. Where art thou? I'll be with thee straight. Lysander, come out and play gay! Lysander, speak again! Thou run away, thou coward! Art thou fled? Speak! Where dost thou hide thy head? Thou coward, why comest thou not? I'll whip thee with a rod! He is defiled that draws a sword on thee! Yeah? Art thou there? Follow my voice! We'll try no manhood here! This villain is much lighter field than I. I come where he calls, but faster did he fly. And I am lost. So I will rest my head here and tarry for the comfort of the day. And if the daylight shine, I will find Demetrius and revenge this spite. If thou darest, for well I wot thou runnest before me, and shifting every place, and darest not stand, nor look me in the face. Where art thou now? 
Demetrius, come on and play day. Nay then, thou mockest me. Thou shalt buy thy steer, and remember I thy face by daylight see. Now go thy way, for faintness constraineth me to measure my leg down on this cold bed. My day's approach look to be visited. I'm strangely tired. And kill me a red hip, tumble me on the tip of a thistle. And good madam, bring me the honey bag. Do not fret yourself too much in the action, good madam. And, oh, good madam, have a care the honey bag break not. I would be loath to have you overflown with a honey bag, senor. Is that all? Where's mustard seed? Here. Ready? Give me your knee, monsieur mustard seed. Knee! Pray, leave your courtesy, good monsieur. What is your will? Nothing good, monsieur, but cavalry cobweb to scratch. I must in the bar, but for me thinks I'm getting marvelously hairy about I am such a tender ass. You said it, Tom. If my hair do but tickle me, I must scratch. Do it! What? Will thou hear some music, my sweet love? I have a reasonable good ear in music. Let's have the tongs and the bones. Or say, sweet love, what thou desirest to eat. Truly, a peck of trolliger. I can munch your good dry oats. For methinks I have a great desire to eat. Good, sweet hay hath no gun. I have a venturous fairy that shall seek the squirrel's hoard to get thee new nuts. Well, I had rather have a handful or two of uh, dried peas. Uh, uh, I, I pray you. Welcome, wanderer. Seest thou this sweet sight? Her dotage I now do begin to pity. Uh, my lord, won't she be a little mad at you? Not so now, sir, that her boot she's through. Although one thing may be true, I think our sword shall now be through. How undo this painful imperfection of her eyes, and good Robin, remove the transformed scalp from the head of this Athenian swain, that when he awakening as the others do, may all back again to Athens repair, and think no more of this night's
I guess I deserve that. <coughs> Titania, forgive me just a moment to amuse the common and strike more common dead of these five than common sleep that sense. Help me help young lovers come to happy ends. For love, but not for love of you. Music ho! Music such a charm. Stop that music! Stop that music! <laughs> Very big. 
Listen, I have had a dream past the a man to say a dream of life. Man is but an ass if you go about to be balanced. A few thought I was. Uh, there is no man to tell what. A few thought I was, and you thought I had. Or in the night, imagining some fear. How easy is a bush supposed to be? 
You want to play dog? What a great is happening for this team. Is there no... What magic? What music? How should we beguile the lazy guys up some life? Got his options, boss. Everybody wants to perform for the Duke of Doom Athens and the hip-hop icon. These dudes, aka Big DZ, aka DZ Thieves, aka Team G, aka DZ Smalls, aka the Duke of Swag. You have left one now. AKA Big DZ, AKA DZ Ds, AKA DD, AKA DZ Smalls, AKA the Duke of Swag. You have left one out. Right, sorry. AKA Little Baby DZ. Right, sorry. AKA Little Baby DZ. Thanks. Tis my fave. Right here, beat this list. Chain. Nothing impaired, but all disordered. If you want to continue, y'all gonna have to spice it up a bit. How about you kick it to a beat? A beat? To a beat. A beat? Then, make it like a hip hop or a. Yo, Billy, give him something they can bop to. My lord, allow me. As you wish, kick it, eggs.
the other slate. We're back with Blade, but Blade, 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 Blade keeps bringing me broke to Blade, 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 And this is very tender, and then we'll very shake, because that's our truth. And that, for all of the press, let Lime Ball, who tried to love us, twain that march to Earth, what they do. Remain. 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 Word. Word. I wonder if the lion can just speak. No wonder, my lord. One lion may as many asses do. In this same interlude, it doth befall that I once sat by name present a wall, and as such a wall as I would have you think, stood in, in a crannied hole or chink. Through which the water pyramid that there be, far too whispered, seeing him be. This womb is one cast in this stone box show. Night with hues so black, O oh, night, whichever art when day is night. Night, O oh, night, alack, alack, alack! I fear my Thisbe's promise is forgot. And thou, O oh, wall, O oh, sweet, O oh, lovely one, which stands between her father's ground and mine, thou wall, O oh, sweet, O oh, lovely one, show me thy chink to blink through with mine eyes. Thanks, courteous wall, Jove shield thee well for this. Then what I see. Do I see? Oh, wicked wall, through whom I see no bliss! Cursed be thy stones for thus deceiving me! So swear. Yeah, Billy. I'm enjoying the juxtaposition of this melodrama. <laughs> the wall, methinks, being sensible, should curse again. Uh, 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 no, in truth, sir, it should not. Uh, you see, deceiving me is this week's cue. She is to enter now, and I am to spy her through the wall. Oh, you shall see. It shall fall pat as I told you. Oh, yonder she comes. <laughs> oh, waffle well, like an ass, thou heard my moans for parting my fair pyramus and me. My cherry lips have often kissed thy stones, the stones with lime and turn it up in me. I hear a voice. An eye to the wall to spy, and I can see my Thisbe's face. Thisbe! My love thou art, my love I think. Think what thou will, I am thy lover's grace. And like Lymander, if I trust thee still. Thy life held to the face me kiss. Not shackless to Procris, so true. A shackless to Procris, that he is. Kiss me through the hole of this vile wall. Yeah. <laughs> I kiss the wall's hole, not your lips at all. <laughs> I kiss the wall's hole, not your lips at all. Oh, wilt thou meet me at Ninny's tomb straightway? Tide life, tide death, I come without delay. down between these two neighbors. No remedy, my lord. When Wald is so willful to hear without warning. This is the silliest stuff I ever, like, heard. <laughs> <laughs> Best in this kind, you're but shallow. Worst or no worse, if imagination of men. It must be your imagination, then, and not theirs. If we imagine them no worse than they of themselves, they may pass the fine men. Ah! A lion! Don't let me have a lion! It's all good. I just thought I saw something else scary. Yeah, over there. 
Nobody saw nothing. This land turned off the moon represent. Myself the man of the moon you seem to be. I am weary of this moon. When he would change. It appears by his small light of discretion that he is in the way. But in all courtesy, we must allow the time. Proceed, moon. All I have to say is that this moon, this land turns to the moon, myself a man the moon, and this thorn bush, my thorn bush. Oh, then all of these should be in the lantern, for all of these are in the moon, right? Oh, but silence. Here's this bit. This is old Ninny's tomb. Where is my love? moon. I thank thee for thy sunny beams. I thank thee, moon, for shining now so bright. For by thy gracious gold and glittering gleams, I trust to take a truest business of thee. Nay, oh, spite. But mark, poor knight, what dreadful dole is he? Eyes, do you see? How can it be? Oh, what's thy mantle good, stained with blood? Oh, dainty girl. Oh dear. Approach ye furies fell. Come, 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 thread and thrum. Quail, crush, conclude, and quell. This passion and the death of a dear friend could go near make a man look sad. Be sure my heart, but I pity the man. Wherefore, nature, didst thou lions crave? Since lion vile here hath deflowered my dear, which is. No, no, which was. Fairest dame that lived, that loved, that liked, that looked with you. Come to confound. Out sword, and wound thy pap of pyramus. I, that left pap, for the heart doth pop. Uh, <laughs> ah! <laughs> Thus die I, thus, thus die. Now am I dead. Now am I fled. My soul is in the sky. Tongue, take thy flight. Moon, lose thy light. Now die, 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 die. Die! <laughs> No die, but an ace for him, for he is but one. Less than an ace, man, for he is dead, he is nothing. With help of a surgeon, he might yet recover. <laughs> but Moonshine is gone before Thisbe comes back and finds her a lover. She will find him by starlight. Here she comes now, and her passion gets in play. He thinks she should not use a long one for such a fearless. I hope she will be free. Both will turn the balance. Which pyramus, which this is the better? He for a man got born to us. She for a woman got blessed. She has spied with her sweet eyes. Now she means Videla sent. Asleep, my love. What dead, my dove? O oh, Pyramus, arise. Speak, speak, quite dumb. Dead, dead, a tomb must cover thy sweet eyes. <laughs> These my lips, this cherry nose, are gone, are gone. Lovers make moan. His eyes were green as leeks. O oh, sisters three, come, come to me with hands as pale as milk. Lay them in gore, since you have sure. With shears his thread of silk. Tongue not a word. Come, trusty sword. Come, blade, my breast. Embrace, embrace. <coughs>
Moonshine and Lion are left to bury the dead. I and wall to No 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 I assure you the wall is down that part of the place. Will it leave you to see the epilogue or perhaps to hear a Bergamas dance between our company? No epilogue, I pray you. For your play needs no excuse. Never excuse, for when the players are all dead, there's none to be blamed. Mary, if he that had wrote the play had hanged himself in Thisbe's garter, it would have been a fine tragedy. But you are truly and very notably discharged. But come, your burgomaster, let your epilogue alone. Now, wait just a minute, good thesis. I will come with the music plays and she antagonist fights when no one thinks to call. Bucci! Wait, your Bucci? Yeah! Bucci! Everybody, party! gathering light by the dead and drowsy fire. Every elf and fairy is right up as light as bird from brock. And this ditty after me sing and dance and tripping. Hand in hand with fairy grace we will sing and bless this place. Now until the break of day through this house each fairy shred. And each several chamber through this palace blessed with sweet peace. And the owner of it that blessed shall ever in safety rest. Trip away. Make no stay. Meet me by the break of day. Yeah. If we shadows have offended, think but this, and all is mended. That you have not suffered here while these visions did appear. And this week I will be no more yielding but a dream. Gentles, do not reprehend. If you pardon, pardon we will bend. And as I am an honest one, if we have other flock, now escape the servant's tongue. Shall make a bed ere long, as the puck a warrior call. So good night unto you all. Give me your hands if we be friends, and Robin shall restore amends. So give me your hands if we be friends, and Robin shall restore amends. Nevertheless, it is time for you to move on to your next class. Have a nice dream! <laughs> 